All right, one and four. So let's wait like two more minutes and get started, you think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have lots of stuff to show. Trish gave it to me for Christmas. Daniel has one too. <laughs> I keep I keep her right next to me. It's awesome. Well, Courtney, we're at 94. We can keep letting people in, but I <laughs> Yeah, want to get started then? Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much. It's awesome to see everyone's smiling faces. And especially from all different walks of life and industry and all different places that we uh, fall into, right? But I just want to say thank you on behalf of Millcraft for your time today. I know this is a crazy time and what's most important for us is to stay connected with each and every one of you. Uh, if you're not familiar with Millcraft, we are a merchant in the brand communications uh, space. And so we're really fortunate to have Trish with us today. And so thank you guys so much for taking the time. We look forward to bringing you many more opportunities to meet up. And we hope you enjoy. Go ahead, Tear. Yeah, so I, for those of you who don't know Trish, which I find hard to believe, we have Trish um, Witkowski, from, uh, who is the CEO of the Fold Factory. And she's not only going to give us a sneak peek of her studio with the help of her daughter and husband, she's also going to show us her most memorable folds. So we're really looking forward to this. So now if you want to go into the speaker view, it might be better for everyone so you can see her up close and personal. And that's in the the upper right hand if you're not used to using Zoom. It might help if everybody hit mute. <coughs> Except Susan's gonna mute. Mute. Yeah, Susan's going to mute everybody. But you will be able to get yourself off of mute if you have a question. And then also I'll be managing or monitoring the chat. So if you do have a question, I'll kind of pull those together and, you know, interrupt Trisha as needed or at least kind of pull any questions or ideas or comments that you guys have. So... Please use that chat. It's in the bottom bar, uh, right in the middle. It looks like a little uh, speaker bubble. So thanks again. All right, is it go time? I think it's my turn. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, great to see you all today. This is really fun. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. Um, I want to start, I, I'm actually coming at you from Maryland right now in my home studio. And I want to make a couple of introductions. Um, my daughter Audrey, she's 13. She's going Hi, to be, yeah, she's going to be helping me out today, handing me stuff. Okay, you're all set. Thanks, bud. Um, we actually have a son. He's 12. His name's Miles. He was a little camera shy, so he may or may not be uh, popping in today. But uh, and I've got my husband behind the camera, and um, I thought it might be fun to start with a little tour of my studio. I get a lot of questions about how we create the content that we create. And I actually do a lot of um, camera and video work right out of my home studio. So this is where I shoot um, edit cam videos with my hands opening and closing different folded pieces. We have cameras that we mount and um, take down stills and video um, up here in the ring light. And then um, I also do some stills here, different still work as well. And then this is actually a staging area here where I put a lot of my materials when I'm about to shoot or before I shoot an episode of Fold of the Week. And then this is my famous Fold of the Week studio um, here, my red chair. This is my plant that, by the way, is a real plant. I get a lot of questions about whether the plant is real or not. Or no, I'm sorry, did I say it was real? <laughs> it's fake, actually. No, it's fake. It looks real. It's fake. It's traveled with us through many moves. Um, that's our reflector that usually comes right here. And then this is my camera and tripod with a shotgun mic. And I basically use a remote. And um, that's how I shoot. I actually just shot this morning, episode 508, hard to believe. But um, so this is where I do that work. And then that just gets pulled down and produced. So this is where I do um, most of my work. So just kind of, kind of fun. I just thought you might like to see where, uh, where all of that happens. So I have lots of fun things to share with everybody. Actually, when Millcraft contacted me, I kind of went, gosh, it's 
I can do whatever I want. I can share whatever I want. And my first thought was, oh, I'll, I'll grab some of my favorites from Fold of the Week. But then after that, I thought, okay, I'll show a few of those things. But I have so many things in my collection that no one has ever seen. And so this was kind of a fun um, excuse to dig up some really neat things that don't make it to the show. So um, I've also got some low budget tips, some, some great low budget formats for everybody. Right now we're all kind of trying to decide how to rethink our marketing and rethink our direct mail programs um, with everything that's been going on. So I also want to give you some nice low budget ideas and ways to really keep in touch and leverage print um, in lots of different ways moving forward in the coming weeks. So um, I wanted to start with just a few of my favorites from Fold of the Week over the years. So um, as many of you know, we has passed the 500 episode mark a few weeks ago. We're already on episode 508. Um, and so I, I just kind of went through the collection to find some things that were just particularly memorable for me. So um, one of my favorites actually, believe it or not, is, is the folded format from episode one of Fold of the Week, the first episode I ever shot. And this is, it's basically, it's got a glueless pocket here and an accordion fold that's tucked into it. So this is an accordion fold. And then this piece, actually, that was a glueless pocket. It rolls out. And then it has a short fold that folds down. And what is particularly great about this is this possibility for a glueless scenario. So with or without the insert, it's still a great piece. You get a lot of real estate for graphics, um, just hands down one of my favorites over the years. So this one's from episode one. Oops, there we go. Um, this is another one that just stands out to me as um, a piece that I have loved. This was more recent. This was episode 463. And um, this one's on the fancier side, but just very, very memorable. It was a hard rock piece. It's got different effects and soft touch, etc. But this piece also has a really wonderful die cut and foil. This is an accordion with longer panels on the cover and back cover. Just a, a spectacularly beautiful piece. So this one stands out to me. Um, <laughs> this was so fun, by the way, to go through. Um, oh, I have just bins and bins of content, thousands of pieces. So it was fun to kind of just randomly grab some of my favorites. This one was episode 256. And um, this is a wrapped accordion with a die cut. And it's got a once upon a time theme and the different panels have kind of a sculpted die and then it forms a, a dimensional window and a story. And I love the wrapped cover that closes the edge, just a neat piece. This one I get so many requests about, and actually it's been open and closed so many times that it's kind of flimsy because I've, I've had to take it apart so many times. This was from episode 341, and here we go. It might be upside down. <laughs> I think it is. I think I did it upside down, but regardless, here we go. Maybe not. There we go. But it folds flat, basically. It's, it's basically four pieces snapped together. And this piece, I just get so many questions about. Um, I've had people ask for it um, over the years. So I thought this was a good one because it's so wild that it can go be completely flat and then turn into this dimensional piece. Fun. What else do I have here? I'm just gonna be random about this. This is one of the weirdest things I've shown on the show, and yet I just always love it. This was episode 118. Um, this is a brochure that is also a carrier, like it has a handle in it. So it's just kind of wild. This was a uh, real estate promotion actually, and it opens like this, it's a huge piece, opens like this, opens like this and then folds out again up and down so it's up you want to help me 
so it opens into a big poster, but then it folds down. There we go. Thanks, bud. And then in like this and like this, and it's got its own handle in it. So uh, as I said, this was episode um, 118, just one of the wilder things um, that we've shown on the show. So I, I really, really like this one. It's just fun. It stands out to me. Um, this one I also love. Um, this was episode 312. And I think this is so um, innovative because it's a simple self-mailer that opens up and it has these two, I call them violators basically, but like these, you know, attention points here and here that you pull out. But then you'll see here that this is actually a double parallel fold and it's glued at the bottom. And so what you get is a shadow, you get some dimension and depth, and then you also get the interaction um, of these little violators on the sides that reveal messages. Um, and I just think this is so simple in what it is. It's four panels with the base glued, glued together right there. And then the die cuts that fold in to finish. And then this piece um, self mails. So I love kind of one piece integrated types of solutions, especially ones that create, you know, really simple, clever, um, you know, ideas. And also I love the addition of dimension and interaction. So I think this one hits like so many different categories um, that make it really engaging. So love, love, love this one. Um, Audrey, you know what? Why don't you give me that um, stack right there? Okay. Thanks, bud. Yep. Okay. So one of the things that um, I promised everybody when we started was that I was going to give you some low budget solutions as well. So as I was looking through, you know, over 500 episodes of Fold of the Week, plus bins and bins of other materials that I've collected over the years, some that have made the show, some that haven't, um, I wanted to pull some things that I thought would just get everyone's creative juices flowing and, um, you know, just nice things for thinking about your marketing campaigns in the coming weeks. So these are some just really nice, I call them low budget wonders. So things that have a lot of bang for the buck. Um, and so I like this one a lot. This one was actually on episode 308. Um, this one can be folded by machine. It takes the form of a trifold, but it also has, um, if you flip it to the back, or you know what, why don't I put it down? Mm -hmm. um, and it can open like this. So it basically kind of gates in and you can play with the width of this and the placement of it. There's no requirement for exactly where this break is, but you get a really nice sliver of imagery that could be large or small. Um, it could be a nice sneak peek of uh, material. I love this because it's kind of, kind of hiding, you know, a really text heavy area um, and you can reveal it, but then you also can hide it to get to some other materials on, in this case, an event. So um, I really, really like this format, folded by machine, simple type of a trifold format. Um, this one I love. I love these kind of, um, uh, what do I want to say, almost uh, like signature folds, but that can create really nice pieces for mail. This one I love, by the way, um, we'll take the little post off, sorry. Um, this one I love, by the way, because this is kind of a zine format. So this piece is a mail piece, but it also tells a story in kind of a zine format um, for this company. And this is Acres Brewing Company. And right now, we're, when we're using mail to continue a relationship, I mean, that's really how we should see it. Mail is all about creating and continuing a relationship. And so even right now, if not all of our customers are buying, how do we keep our story going? How do we keep the relationship going? Um, this piece is, is just beautifully done, um, but it's also just one sheet folded. It's got stories, photos, articles that really tells about who they are as a brand, what they do. Um, it's interesting, it's soft, it's engaging, and it just folds over and down and over again and just simple format that could be you know it's basically folded down it could be tabbed in mail put into an envelope but you know 
whatever way you want to do it, but it's a wonderful way to communicate, especially right now. So I thought this one was a great one to show. Um, kind of similar but different subject matter uh, as far as the, the fold itself. I really like these um, kind of larger pieces that fold down nice, um, but then they also open up. And I love how this one opens down, actually, and just a wonderful use of space on the sheet. Um, simple, simple fold in half, in half, you know, and then quarter folded down um, into just a really nice size and format. Um, very soft. I just, I love this one as well. And these are just easy machine folds um, that can be done. This one was actually um, last week's episode, episode 507, but I wanted to bring this back around because it's just an accordion fold, but it's very subtly stepped. And so if you see here, these are quarter inch steps on there. And all you're doing here is varying that width um, ever so slightly and it's creating some texture, visual texture on the edge. Very simple, machinable um, as far as the format for production. Um, just a really nice, I like the proportion. Lots of things about that that I like. Um, this one I'm showing because this is eternally a popular one from the show, and it's probably the simplest thing um, I've ever shown on Fold of the Week, and it's technically not a fold, but it's my show and I get to do what I want. So uh, this is from episode 239, and um, this is an event uh, invitation, and it says, Fun Times Are Brewing at Eagle's Trace. This is just two rectangular cards with an eyelet holding them together, and it says, Turn this bottle upside down. And when you turn it, you're basically pouring yourself a beer. And so all this is is the interaction between two images and two rectangles and an eyelet. So I love that the simplicity, this went right into an envelope and mailed. And so simple, fun, engaging, just using imagery and simplicity, um, so nice. Um, this one I like also for its simplicity. This piece was episode 168. It is a self-mailing piece. There's the mailing panel. Um, but I love their use of a creative, just bold imagery, creative die cut as the flap that seals this. And then it opens up and just fun, bright, bold, simple, simple, simple. Fold it over, fold it over and glue really fun, great use of brand, great use of color, um, and awesome as a self-mailer. What else do I have here? Kind of randomly choosing here. Okay, um, this is a great one too. This piece is also a self-mailer, and um, this is a wrapped, stepped accordion format, and so this has, basically it opens like this, and this is, this is also an accordion, as you can see, you got the wrapped edge, but it's stepped. Another stepped kind of accordion format, but with a wrapped cover. But what I love about this is look at how much information is in this. It is pretty unbelievable what's on this one sheet. And yet it all so nicely tucks up folds up into these organized tabs for the different grades. This is a school. They have all their different educational information. And so it's showing all these different things in a really, really organized way. Um, I believe this one did go in an envelope, but this type of format of wrapped, stepped, or wrapped regular accordion, things like that can self-mail when they're in the right proportion and, and everything. But what I love about this is how efficient it is in one piece. And this format can be machine folded. So I love that. What else do I have? Let's see, this is fun. So many of these pieces I have not really, you know, seen in a while. So it's always kind of fun for me. Um, this is episode 13 of Fold of the Week. Um, and this one is a double parallel. Um, but watch this. So, okay, so double parallel is like this. So in half and in half. But what they did is this interior panel is just a little long. And so it sticks out right here. But on the back, it's also, so you can see, it's just this one panel that's long. 
and you just get this neat sneak peek but it's a it's a double parallel big imagery on the inside and just fun because they did the metallic on the outside sneak peek here um very cool and then uh let's see i want to show this one yeah is there a question yeah, just um, to reiterate, because, uh, you know, we didn't talk about it in the beginning. You're talking about your episodes, but people want to know, where can I go find the episodes? Oh, great question. Yes, um, youtube.com slash Fold Factory. There is an entire um, playlist called Fold of the Week. So, and then if you want to get to the really early episodes, there's the embarrassing ones. <laughs> um, that is Fold of the Week archive. So, if you really want to see the early ones, Fold of the Week archive. And then Fold of the Week is episodes 101 to 500 plus. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks for asking that. Um, so, and this one actually was not on the, on the show, but I liked this one as a low budget piece. This is a reverse roll fold, and it's got a long trailing panel here and opens out like this. Just simple and nice. And so just to reiterate, I'm showing you kind of some really nice things that are great on a budget um, as we're kind of revamping our marketing campaigns. And, you know, there are also some really great things that you can do on simple formats with special print effects. So this one I love showing because this is just a trifold. This was for People Magazine. It's got a little die cut on the cover. Um, it's also, I think, yep, I can see on my screen here, you can see this is a gloss UV with a soft touch UV, so rose petal versus gloss, um, and there's just this wonderful effect going on and a sensory effect. You know, you're, you're touching it, it feels great, it looks great, the light's hitting it, they've got white ink on black, it's just very cool, um, but also just a trifold. So you can do all of these extra things that can um, you know, enhance that engagement, even in very basic formats. So, so cool. Um, I think I want to move on, Aubrey, to the next thing. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions up to this point? Okay, let's do this. Um, Aubrey, I'm going to have you take that away, if you can okay. put that on the table. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. So, hey, Coach. Oh. Yeah. How do you get these samples? Where do they come from? And how do people submit? Or where do you get the inspiration from? Yep, so all sorts. So I've actually been collecting um, printed samples for over 20 years. So this is a 20 year plus collection. Um, and I get samples actually from lots of different ways. So people send me stuff um, to the Fold Factory PO box. And that's um, always like at Fold of the Week at the bottom, it says, you know, send samples to PO box 498. Um, Hunt Valley, Maryland, um, 21030, if anybody wants to send me cool things. Also, um, I do speaking events, um, not right now, everybody's kind of staying in, but I do speaking events, and whenever I travel, um, sometimes uh, attendees bring me samples uh, of theirs. I get things from um, different printers and bindaries um, in the industry, uh, whether I'm doing an event or at an industry event. Um, and then people also send them to me. A lot of, I, there are a lot of printing companies um, that I also kind of stalk and I, <laughs> and I say, okay, what have you guys been doing? I know you're doing cool things. So I also get things, it's kind of a two way. So sometimes I'm asking uh, and requesting to see if anybody has anything. And then sometimes I'm always get having people send me things as well. And so I'm always looking, however, for the show, um, I try not to repeat a lot of the things that I've shown, and I don't mean that the design or something, um, I never repeat the same piece that I've shown, but I also, for example, if I show an iron cross fold, um, which I showed early on in the series, um, I don't show more iron cross folds in that format. What I do is I show modifications to the iron cross fold. So I, I tend to show either modifications, um, hybrid formats, other ways, anything that's kind of an improvement or a change on the design, rather than kind of saying, well, it's time to do, you know, an iron cross again. I haven't done one in a year and a half or something. I, I don't repeat that way. I tend to always be looking for new, different ways to see things, different ways to share them. Um, I love low budget solutions that everybody can get bang for the buck on. Um, you know, I think you can do anything when the sky's the limit. So I'm always impressed by really high end pieces, but um, I feel, I'm actually most impressed by the, the low budget innovation that I see. So 
Um, so that's kind of where uh, a lot of the, the pieces come from. So. Awesome. Yeah. I also had another question pop up. Sure. Um, just really talking about paperweight, right? And I know that Terry could chime in here too, right? They're asking, so what would you recommend for minimum paperweight with folds? And then also when you're considering two-sided printing because of needing to make sure that you have the opacity, you know, that would be Yes. Awesome. Yes, that's a great question. So I, I, I will say I tend to favor like the 80 texts um you know for opacity but it also it has it really depends on the sheet you're using um it depends on how much heavy ink coverage you have um i, I guess what my I, I guess what i would say is the first step is acknowledging how important the paper is in the process that choice um in collecting thousands of samples over the years i've seen lots of successes and lots of failures and unfortunately the failures tend to be things that could have been a great piece if they had chosen a lighter or heavier stock or a you know better uh you know different texture or something like that so i always um advocate that you should you know get some samples or test um and also ask your printer your printer knows they've been doing this for a long time if they say you know you really ought to be on an 80 or on a cover weight or something, you know, I would take that seriously. Um, you know, I know a lot of times we try to find ways to save money. Um, and so sometimes it's, well, we can go lighter, we can do this or that. And, you know, it, it makes a gigantic difference in um, how the piece looks and feels if we have the wrong sheet. So I just think it's a little bit of advanced planning on that. Um, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of uh, paper dummies and, you know, tests and getting some advice on that rather than just going with my gut. And, and for shameless um, self-promotion, we'll help you with that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Yay. Cool. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm good for now. It's so okay. Good. Thanks. Those were great questions. Um, so I wanted to move on to some just other things that I collect because anyway, you guys can go binge watch full of the week episodes and that's fun and you can always see all sorts of things, but what can't you see? So, um, I collect all sorts of, I, I'm a print lover. I, I, I think there's, you know, beauty in lots of different forms of print. And I think too, um, a lot of us in the, in the industry, I know, um, Danielle Dejan and I share this uh, as well as we have so many things that we love and we tend to um, think, you know, oh, someday I'll write a blog post about that or someday I'll, you know, use that. And so I have a lot of things that are kind of set aside for blog posts someday and other things. Um, so anyway, I collect um, pocket folders, all sorts of unique pocket folders because I think there's innovation in those and we see a lot of just straight nine by 12 um, you know, single pocket, double pocket stuff. And so I tend to look for innovation in these types of things as well. So um, I thought I'd show some to you guys. One of my favorite things is glueless pocket folders. Um, and I love this one. This one actually is also, I like the proportion or the orientation on this landscape orientation opens like this, but this is a glueless pocket. It's got a little tab right here. You can see, and that, connects into this one right here in this little flap and so in folding this in and bending in this tab it forms a little locked pocket so i love that just simple innovation and i know a lot of people have clients who you know have green initiatives and they're trying to use less glue and less this and less that and i, I really like these types of solutions Here's another glueless pocket idea for everybody. This one's a vertical. So these are both kind of unique um, orientation, but this piece opens, it tucks in right here and opens like this. So this is a little curve that tucks into this curve, opens like this. And that little tuck kind of locks this whole thing together. That's the bottom. And then it has little sides. And so what's neat about this is you put your materials in, hold it in left and right, fold up the bottom, and then uh, in it goes. So another just neat idea for a glueless pocket folder. And that's why I collect it. That's how it made my collection. Um, this is a fun one because it has a little piece of Velcro. Um, this one's an iron cross type of a format that opens up like this. 
and then opens left, or yes, that's your left, left and right. And then this has a pocket actually right here. So it's got a custom pocket, um, but I like this kind of T cross format and I like these overlays. So it's, it's a mix between a marketing brochure and a pocket folder, which is really neat. Um, and I think it can have lots of different materials in it, which is very nice. So um, I like that one. What else do I have that is fun? Um, okay, I like this one for its simplicity. Uh, this is just so simple. This is a classic 9 by 12 folder. There's some nice um, print effects going on on this. But look at the die cuts and how it kind of makes your eye focus. Um, you know, in these areas. And I love the shape of this. And then it's got a pocket here. So they kind of echo this angle. And they've got this heart right here. And I just thought, what a neat idea for a pocket folder. So made my collection. <laughs> um, okay, this one actually was on the show. And this one's neat because this has an accordion this is a stepped accordion front, but it's one piece with a pocket right here. So here's the pocket. And then it's like a brochure on the front of it. So this covers the inserts, but then it also works as this really nice brochure. So I love that. I think it's so unique. This is for a dance festival. Um, clever, very clever. This one's funny. Um, this says caution contracts or contents extremely uh, groovy. It's got a short trim cover. <laughs> and then it's got a pocket right here. So just fun for marketing materials. But I love this idea of doing something surprising and dimensional and giving people a reason to open and then having a fun pocket down here. Kind of wild. Um, this is probably my most favorite pocket folder in my entire collection. Um, and this one has a flipper book integration in it. So this is a classic nine by 12. So nothing that exciting about it as a folder until you do this. So I just love the surprise. <laughs> Audrey's never seen it. She has to come around the corner like, what is mom showing? Yeah, so this is really, cool and i love this a lot of times you see this type of a thing in marketing brochures or invitations and things you don't see a lot to begin with but it's very cool off the cover of a 9 by 12 pocket folder so that's some of my folders oh wait i have one more to show because this one is my absolute favorite in my okay so that was my <laughs> that was my favorite dimensional one that's what i'll say this is my most favorite from um a design perspective. It's the most beautiful pocket folder I've ever seen, designed by Jean Chung in California. Um, it's got this beautiful, beautiful die cut here. It's like soft and just beautiful. And then it opens like this, got a little piece of Velcro. And then it opens like this. And it's got just these beautiful pockets on either side, the die cuts as a whole branding thing going on there's stationary i can show you like eight pieces of this but i love how beautifully designed this this folder is the colors the shapes the die cuts the way it was designed and i love the silhouette to close um so anyway totally awesome so okay so are you ready for the next round so, so about that yeah. Trish, with that piece too, the placement of the eyelet for the Velcro makes it yes. look like an eyelet on the other side. It's so cute. <laughs> yes, like it's it's all the design details that are just spot on with that. That are just it makes it just elevates it. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I want to show um, everybody in the categories. Uh, I actually have a couple more categories of things that I collect. Um, I like folded magazine covers that are wild. So I have some of those to show you guys um, <laughs> because I think there's some innovation in magazine covers, but you don't see it very often. So when there's something cool, I like to grab it. Um, this was Wired Magazine and they did a roll fold cover that was pretty unique. 
So they also have a, um, a sandpaper UV coating on the outside, which is kind of wired thing, but it's got a really cool texture about it that's kind of scratchy. So um, I really liked this because also they did this just panoramic photo. And that's really the beauty of, of the, um, the rolling cover. So that one's especially cool. Um, this one's neat because it is a wrapped, it's a double parallel cover. So it wraps around like this to the back. So it, it basically wraps around the magazine and has like a double cover, but also all of this advertising space. So I thought this was neat um, because this is perfect bound, but then um, this piece is doing the same thing except with a saddle stitch. So now you wouldn't think that they could do that with a saddle stitch because there's stitching in there. But what they did is they built holes for the stitches. You see them right there? And so it basically does the same thing except the stitches are right through there. So double parallel cover with accommodation for the saddle stitch. So wild and crazy. I liked this one because it's short and unexpected that it goes like this with a little short fold out and then a double cover. So it's kind of neat how this goes in register and folds here, opens out like that. And I think sometimes with these things, they're, they're great for giving us ideas for other types of projects as well, covers on bound materials, things like that. But I thought that I, I think sometimes there's innovation in magazines. So I thought you guys would like that. Thank you. Audrey's already ready with my next little round of things. <laughs> um, I also like clever packaging. Audrey, you want to give me that one too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. This one's nice. And we'll do this one first. This is one of my favorites. Um, so this is so much fun. I, I love this so much. It's kind of large, but I can't get rid of it because I love it so much. Um, and so this piece opens up like this. And this was, this is actually a giveaway for customers, um, for a clam bake that Oliver Printing does every year. And look how this thing opens. It's one piece. These fold out and glue, I mean, they glue in like this, but there's a t-shirt in here that everybody who goes to the clam bake gets the t-shirt. So I've kept the t-shirt in here because I love this package so much, but it's a little, you know, it's got a little carry, becomes its own little carry case. And then this just closes up like that. And every year they redesign these, reinvent the packaging. Um, I just think that is the neatest thing. And I have some other just fun mail pieces. Um, this was uh, for uh, Maryland Institute College of Art. And it opens like this. This has a little insert. And it opens like this. And all these pieces were done on one press sheet. Um, and so I love the way this works. Now, I showed this years ago um, on Fold of the Week. And then, um, I'll put that together later. <laughs> um, and then saw a few years later that a cosmetic brand pharmacy actually uses this format on their boxes for their face creams and all sorts of things. So I love that they took it. So this one had the cover that was separate and this one has the integrated cover. So really neat how that works. And then this tucks in like this. So I love that kind of design modification that went from a two piece to a one piece. And then um, speaking of one piece, my friend Jamie McLennan uh, sent me this. And um, this is a one piece also. And this uses some interesting diagonal folds and opens up. This is all one piece. Just really wild how this can all tuck in and work together. I'm struggling to do it backwards. Sorry, everybody, but there we go. And then tuck in and it's all one piece. So 
I just thought that was super cool. I thought you guys might like to see some of my fun packages that I have. Um, and then before I take questions, I have one last thing that I wanted to share with you guys. Audrey, you want to give that to me, please? Yep. Thank you. Um, so over the years, so I've been shooting um, full of the week for 10 years, and I have a lot of uh, loyal viewers. And um, sometimes my viewers send me special things. Hey, uh, <laughs> Audrey's like fixing things and I've got some ambient noise. <laughs> Thank <Sorry>. you. <laughs> um, so sometimes um, Full Factory fans and fans of Full of the Week send me things, just different things, special things. And um, I had a, a long time viewer um, and fan of, of Full Factory send me a, a collection of vintage folded greeting cards. And his name's John Sorantos. He's been watching forever. And this year um, at Christmas, he sent me this package with this vintage collection of cards in it. You want to show some? And I'm just, it brought a tear to my eye because I just thought, you know, he, he said, I just thought you would take good care of these. And I just have been wanting to share these. And they're just whimsical and cute. This one says, late for your birthday, what a disgrace. Nothing to do but hide my face. And it's got this little vintage pop-up. And there are several here that are really neat. This one has a little, little pop-up dog, so you can see the dog in the window. And then it pops up. Just a very, very simple, old school pop-up, but so cute. Um, and clever. And this one I love. This one is a happy birthday. Um, it's a birthday one. It's got a little feather on it. It's a kitten. And then it opens and it's a little, um, and for cat's sake, please remember uh, that you're wished a perfect day. And it's got the little piece of cake that is dimensional. And so there's a whole album of these with all different, this one has the different years that you change. Um, and these are just so wonderful and you know I obviously they're not for the show and so I, I thought it was just a fun opportunity um, to show everybody just something special um, that I received from uh, one of my viewers that I certainly cherish and keep in my collection as well and I also think it's just a neat example of how print has always been engaging and how it's evolving, but these are still memorable and wonderful, even from, you know, many years, uh, years ago. So I just thought everybody would kind of enjoy um, seeing part of this collection as well. So, so anyway, that's most of the stuff that I had planned to share with everybody. And then I thought I'd kind of open things up for questions, if there's any other questions um, that anybody has. I do have a couple, but I was giving a pause to make sure let people speak as they would like. <laughs> okay. In the chat box. So if anybody has a question, you can unmute yourself as well. And all you would do is hover over your name and your picture of your uh, yourself, and there's a little menu that comes up that you can hit unmute. Hello, I don't have a question, but I absolutely appreciate this immensely and enjoyed it. And I think that it was inspiring and insightful and fun all the way around. I love sharing uh, these things with my customers and so to be a part of it and just wanted to say thank you. And I've been a, a Fold fan. Oh, thank you. It's so nice to hear from you. Thanks for joining us today. And it just, that just, Makes me feel great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad it's helpful. Thanks. One question I did get um, in the chat box was about dye lines. So yes. can you share, I know you have some dye lines out on foldfactory.com, but then also one specific one that someone was asking about was that actual box that you just showed, the black one, that kind yep. of folded into itself. I'm not sure because it's a package if you have that one or not. No, I think the one before <laughs> that. Oh, this one. Maybe this one? Yes, yes. That's so one that question. I do not have the dye line for that one, but if they reach out to me, I can put them in touch 
um, Jamie McLennan sent me this sample. So um, I could likely at least put them in touch and possibly um, they can get some help uh, with this one. Yeah. And then as far as, so just a, you know, Trisha Fold Factory or whatever, just send me a note and I'll connect uh, you on that one. And then with regard to dye lines, um, we do have dye lines on the Fold Factory site. Um, and then we do, we have so many samples that it is difficult to have dye lines for everything. Um, but we also do some of them on, on request as well. So, um, you know, it varies. We, we do a lot of static dye lines, but we find that people tend to want to modify them anyway. So sometimes our, our dye lines are kind of the foundation and then people use them as the base and then they modify them um, the way that they'd like to. But that's it. If you go to foldfactory.com, we've got kind of a nice baseline of, of dye lines, but we're also always looking for ways to improve. So um, we welcome kind of comments and suggestions on that too. Awesome. Um, some people were asking about being able to share through social media. I did um, take some small snippets and, and really also being able to share your Fold Factory episodes. I think that they're really great inspiration for their customers that are looking for ideas, right? And I think yeah. that's what the whole premise behind this is, is how do we get people, especially during this crazy time, how do we get them thinking about their jobs that are going to print in July or, or August, right? And, and yeah. or tomorrow, we'd like to take them tomorrow too, but let's get their ideas going um, for when people are looking at their campaigns that are coming up. Yep. Ab absolutely. So yes, um, feel free to share any of our videos. Um, everything's on YouTube and you're welcome to share. You don't have to ask my permission or anything like that. Um, I appreciate all the, all the sharing on that. They're really designed to just help inspire people and to give you ideas. Um, and uh, gosh, what was the other question? I can't remember. What, what, sorry, I missed what the second part of that was. <laughs> Oh, really just being able to share and inspire their customers, right? So no, you answer. Oh, yes. And, yes. And helping people, apologies. Um, that's the second part. Helping people to also kind of get back into sending print and mail. Um, I think it's reminding people that really, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but my mailbox has been pretty empty over the past several weeks. Like if you've ever had an opportunity to get people's attention, it's in their mailbox. They've got more time right now. A lot of people do. Um, you know, so sending things that keep a relationship going. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, the discussion uh, a lot right now has been about not being tone deaf about what's going on. So making sure that things are relevant, of course, to what's going on and sensitive to that, but also maintaining your brand story and relationships, trying to be helpful and top of mind. Because what you really want is that you're still top of mind when they come out of, you know, when they're ready to do this again. And hopefully, too, with some simple strategies, um, you know, they'll be ready to start getting right back into it. Because it really is about maintaining that relationship. And mail is a relationship. It's an ongoing thing. So, you know, reminding people that it's about keeping that relationship going, I think, is really important. Absolutely. And I know even what we've done with some of our printer partners is we have feature lists and things that, you know, you're looking that maybe a color isn't stocked anymore and they've been using it for restaurant advertisements and, and to, you know, really get people thinking about takeout and, and different things. So I can't agree with you more. Um, yeah, and there's also lots of ways to, you know, different types of mail to send. I think a lot of times when people think mail, they think sell, 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 which of course we're trying to get ROI for our, you know, for what we've spent and whatever, and sales is a big part of it. But there's, you know, um, newsletter, you know, you can send something informative, you can send tips, you can send you know, just simple drip campaigns that are just giving people a little bit of information and keeping you top of mind. You know, those can be low budget pieces, but things that keep you in everyone's thoughts and, you know, keep that relationship going. It doesn't have to just be, you know, the catalog or the, you know, the hard sell. It can be the, the softer sell that's helpful. Yes, absolutely. I see a couple of people off mute. Do we have any other questions? We had a lot of people asking about being able to watch the Zoom meeting again or to be able to share it with their customers. So just for those of you that can't see the chat, that is absolutely our intention is to uh, be able to reshare and give people inspiration. And then, like I said, too, even just working 
with you on some of your favorite folds and being able to share via social for us as well. One of my favorites was fold number 500. And so I really loved that one. Do you have that one? I do. Give me one second. Uh, I had it, I had, what, oh, it's here. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's okay. I did. I happened to have this one out. And um, this one was a collaboration with um, Fold Factory Structural Graphics and Sappy Fine Paper. And it opens like this. And it's fun because it's got my t-shirt themes. And it opens up. <clears throat> over, down, and over again. Rolls. And we call it the roundabout. <laughs> That's really awesome. Yeah. And I yeah, think my the kids like part about that is that it's just, the way it's constructed, it's just flat sheets that are glued on top of each other. Right, right. And so it's just two pieces and, you know, two of the panels are glued together and in doing so you can overlap and this can actually keep going like you could do another double panel you can just kind of keep going you know as well we did a two you know two piece one but you could technically keep going but just a really fun format we had to do something really cool for the 500th <laughs> 10 years of shooting you've got to do something wild and crazy so <laughs> looks like deborah corn would like to know if mark what his day rate is for video videography <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford it, Deborah. <laughs> I, do, I do see one comment in here, and actually, um, Terry, maybe you could answer this one too, because there's, um, you know, the opportunity to get in front of people while we're, you know, in this lockdown state. But her question was about, you know, being able to mail to people's homes because they're not going into their office, and how to kind of manage through that. I know, Terry, you've had some interactions with people. So I sent a mailer out um, the first week we were on quarantine. And um, basically, I put the mailer out on social media and told people, if you want this, I'll send it to your home. And I promise to use your home address for good and not evil. So I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did get some people that took me up on that. And of course, we always have some home addresses for freelancers and so forth. But yeah, that's the tough part. I think you have to ask permission to send it to them and then, you know, assure them that um, it's going in a confidential place. Right. That's an interesting challenge, especially B2B. You know, I can definitely see how with B2C, it's kind of like, yeah, you can get into people's homes, but on B2B, you do have to either send, I like the idea of sending them that email and asking them if you could send them a piece of mail to their home. Um, I think that's a great, a great approach. And then I think too, if people aren't familiar, I know we've got a lot of tools and resources and a couple experts that we work with at the USPS and they have some very unique tools that you can use for choosing and mapping out people in different um, areas and locations. Uh, they have come up with some really great marketing tools. So if you guys are interested in learning more, please ping one of us at Millcraft and uh, we have the USPS connections and um, some of the information on how to use those tools in a very effective way for target marketing as well. Nice. Door to door. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I think that's wanted... all I see so far. Do we have any questions for Audrey? <laughs> <laughs> you, can come over. Okay. <laughs> you did a great job. Do, do you enjoy folding? Yeah. <laughs> and do you see a future in print for yourself? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to know. <laughs> Yeah, she's very creative and loves all of these different, she works with paper a lot, does all sorts of different projects and crafts. And we have a, we have a craft business as well called Fresh Cut Crafts. And so she helps on the design side of, and uh, testing side of that too. So we do a lot of, with paper around here. <laughs> awesome. Which is awesome. And I love the t-shirts because those, those, those people that are on that don't watch you, um, you wear different t-shirts on all your episodes and we asked her about her family and her family has all their own t-shirts too. So that is so yes. cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll still have, oh, look at that fold. I love it. That's so cute. Yeah. 
<laughs> How big is your t-shirt collection? I'm sorry, what? How big is your t-shirt collection? Um, 508 shirts. So yeah, 508 episodes. We have a different shirt for every single episode. So um, yes, drawers and drawers and drawers of shirts. And um, at one point we took the first like 200 and some of them and had them repurposed in New Jersey. There was like a, like a fabric repurposing place. They're kind of, it's kind of a weird thing because you can't really donate them because of context, they're a little bit weird. And, and so it's kind of like, what do, you, what do you do with all of these shirts, you know? So, so yeah, we have had a big batch of them repurposed and now they're just in all of these drawers and I've got to kind of figure out what to do with them. But people say make quilts out of them, do all sorts of stuff. I, I don't know what to do with them at the moment, but we save them for now. Are you making them? Yes, so um, we used to order them online, um, but now uh, we actually have a digital cutter and we use, we, we, we get the shirts and then um, I do the layout for the type um, in Illustrator, save it out as an SVG, and then we put it on a CNC cutter and cut out the letters on um, heat transfer vinyl. It's a black matte like heat transfer vinyl and iron them on. <laughs> awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's actually kind of fun. I, I, it, it sounds silly, although it is a little bit more work than ordering them online. Um, it's actually kind of fun to create them ourselves. It's just kind of a fun thing, so. Great. Yeah. Well, I don't see any more um, uh, questions. So uh, we just went up from Millcraft, the entire team, and for everyone that's on here too, thank you so much for joining us in community. We hope to bring you lots of inspiration uh, with print, with packaging, with folding, uh, with any of your brand communication. So to both, uh, or not just to both of you, to Mark behind the camera too, right? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all of your time and for your preparation and for working with our team and inspiring our folks on the phone. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It. It's been our pleasure. It was great to, to spend uh, an hour with everybody and uh, wishing everyone well. And uh, we'll see you soon. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Terry right. and Susan, Thanks, great everyone. job. All right. Stay All right. safe. Bye. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Good job. I love you. Love you, too. Oh, good job. <laughs>